Well, there are plans to call this place Speed City, but today it's more of a motorsports metropolis. This is Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas, a three and a half mile, 20 turn state of the art facility built in 2012 to host the United States Grand Prix. And while it still does that to this day, many more series have come racing on the twists and turns of this challenging high speed racetrack, including tonight in iRacing with the Washington DC region SCCA Virtual Racing League. This is their last round of the season, the last points paying night as we sign off for the winter and head into the racing season. And what a way to do it at this fantastic fast racetrack. Kyle Heyer joined by Finian Dacuna tonight for the last round of the season. And Finian, we've been looking forward to this one for a while. Coda has grown on me quite a bit uh, since <laughs> I, I learned about it. And uh, today it's one of my favorite racetracks. Maybe not to be at, but to watch racing at, absolutely. I'm glad you've seen the light, because remember I used to like Coda and you would always look at me like, why do you like this place? <laughs> it sucks. And how the times have changed, but it really Coda has uh, really earned itself as an international venue here in the U.S. It's hosted so many series. You mentioned Formula One. It's hosted rounds for the WEC, uh, IMSA. Uh, now currently hosts races for NASCAR as well. It's seen so many types of racing, and of course now we got the Formula Four cars working around here. And I can tell you that I think this should be a good one with the long straightaways, heavy braking zones for these cars. Should I get a chance to see a lot of passing? Yeah, a lot of slipstream here as well. It's going to make things very interesting. It's a big place, three and a half miles for these Formula 4 cars. It is going to be a blast. There's the run up to Big Red up the hill into turn one. Didn't know that name even, or that corner even had a name until DJ Clark told me it does, apparently. I never heard it, yep. but now I use it, and maybe we'll make it a thing <laughs> if it's not. But here's a look at the weather. It is a great day here in Virtual Austin. 66 in the air, 75 down there on the racetrack. It's a nice uh, sunny day after the chaos we had at spa franc de champ last week. So from one F1 track to another, Finian, open wheel racing one last time this season. Yeah. Anyway, to see these guys get back out here, you know, we had some pretty decent battles all across the series when DJ's not the one up near the top, and we saw a fantastic battle last week at Spa for the top few positions with the rain throwing everything to chaos. A much more simpler race for these drivers. It's clean, dry, not a cloud, nearly not a cloud in the sky. Qualifying already underway. Andrew Pilata currently sitting on the top of the timesheets. Colin Daner, Jake King, and then DJ Austin Janine sitting in fourth. Well, there are 19 drivers, just shy of a 20-car field here for the last race of the season, and it's going to be a good one. And, you know, we talked about the challenges of this racetrack. It's really a tale of two tracks. Uh, it's very different in the first sector versus the middle in the final sector, Finian. Uh, one of my favorite parts is the S's section that Pilata has just gone through. He's just got knocked off provisional pole by DJ Alessandrini. But there's so much flow to the first half of this racetrack and the second half. What some drivers find frustrating and, uh, and tedious, I think, brings on some of the best racing you're going to see. Uh, because there's so much over, under, crossing lanes, lefts and rights all smashed together. And then that big wide carousel, 16 through 18, that leads you into a very fast turn 19, where the challenge is just to stay on the road. Uh, it really is a circuit worthy of praise, uh, even though many at first glance, especially if you're on a single monitor, this is not a fun place to drive. <laughs> no, I was going to say, you definitely would want multi-mall multi -mall monitors or VR to really help site your apex, especially as you're heading down on the end of the back straight, watching Andrew Pallotta, heading to the arena section, a lot of very tight, twisty turns, and it's very hard to site your apex when you can't see it. So a lot of this is going to be a difficult section, but again, we see you can really see some great work through here. Drivers that can get into it through quickly make passes through here, which it almost doesn't seem possible, but a lot of mistakes made here and a lot of people can take advantage of it. Turn 15. This one was the bane of my existence for a while. Got triple screens and it all made sense because you can see where you're going. And then into the carousel. This is one of my favorite parts of the racetrack. Just carrying speed in these cars is basically flat out past the stars and stripes painted on the road and then back to turn 19. A very tricky, fast left-hander. A little bit off camber. You need it to have a bit more camber if you want to go quick, uh, but Pilata is going to round out this lap uh, pretty well. Still not going to go up on the pole, Ooh. I don't think, but a little wiggle. The one thing that still does stink around here, though, is the track limits. iRacing hasn't widened them out like they have at Spa and some other tracks on the calendar. So this place is pretty strict as far as where you keep the car. As long as you're touching curbs with uh, the inside wheels, you're generally okay with these cars that are so narrow, but you can't get creative on track out for sure. Well, the issue is that it is so inviting because there is so much runoff here. And if you, anyone watched the Cup Series race, yeah. uh, you know that NASCAR basically ignored the track limits, I think, in every part of the track except for the S's. Uh, ooh, speaking of what you see there, there's a lot of hitting the anti cut curves. There's another thing the stock cars did not have was those anti cut curves because those would destroy the suspension of nearly every single car in that field. Uh, but these drivers are going to have to avoid that tonight. And it's 
really are on the ragged edge here, especially hitting through the tail end of that section. It's so difficult to get it right, but when you do get it right, you can make up a, a huge amount of lap time. Morgan Burkhardt out there in the number two machine, currently third on the board, and only 30 thousandths of a second behind Andrew Pallotta in second. And yeah, Morgan Burkhardt uh, making well on his promise to run up here at the front. Colin Daner joins us again. We haven't seen Colin in quite some time. He was yeah. a regular for a season or three. Uh, but it's good to see him back in the number 73, currently qualified fourth, not sitting in the car at the moment, uh, but he'll start on the outside of row two if things stay as they are. But Luke Cantor currently up three tenths on his best lap, and Jack Chrissy's up two and a half seconds. I don't think that's true, but he's up some in, in the green on the timing screen. We'll see what Jack's got. They're trying to go just that much faster here as everyone's approaching their third and fourth lap, so... Qualifying slowly coming to an end. As Jack is approaching the line, he'll be uh, able to start one more lap. We'll have just enough time to do so. One lap times run here, about two minutes, two minute fives. That's, is what we're looking at, two that, that's fast. I was here just here a couple weeks ago for Grid Life Touring Cup and the Super Lap Battle event, and uh, the fastest cars of the weekend, you know, 800, 900 horsepower monsters, were in the 203s. So just for reference, a 205 is a really quick lap. And it all is down to how lightweight these cars are and how flickable mm -hmm. they are. They have a little bit of aero as well, but it's really just, you know, their power to weight ratio and just how little they actually do weigh. They can carry so much corner speed. Luke Cantor up to second place. How about that? Yeah, it's all the time. Cut the deficit between Allison Trini and Pallotta basically in half. So he'll insert himself in second place. Pallotta and company, actually Pallotta and Burkhardt are done with their laps. No more times for them. Kevin Zhu across the line up to eighth with his latest time, and he is done for qualifying. Here is Francois Brew in the number 69. Uh, currently down in 14th. This will be his last race, at least for the foreseeable future, as I believe he is moving overseas as he goes for a loop in that uh, that F4. Uh, this will be his last race. We'll hear from him uh, after the broadcast, uh, or at least the racing has come to a close. We'll chat with him a little bit later. Here's Franz Hansen, different car, same livery, the orange with blue wheels. Doesn't have a lap on the board yet, but we'll see what he's got. Yeah, I think uh, we'll see if this lap was clean enough. He is, he will also have just about enough time when he gets back to the line. Get one more lap in, he's on lap three or four working his way through the carousel. And I think for these cars, almost entirely flat out, if not maybe a little lift to get the car rotated a little bit more to the right. I think we're gonna see a lot of guys have to take maybe a lift on when they're heading through their uh, single file nose to tail. If he wants to now through the final corner, just keep it just a little bit more to the left than you probably need to. And across the line for Hanson, was it a clean lap? Yes. 207.3 and up to 11th was a clean lap and the only other driver that doesn't have a clean lap is Nathan Brackman. He's just started his fourth lap so he's running out of opportunities and uh, he's, he's got to keep it in the boundaries and this is the, the challenging thing. When you get to the race it's not such a big deal because it's not absolutely mission critical. You stay on the road for the entire lap but in qualifying it is and right now uh, Nathan Brackman has yet to complete a lap. You see him no big wiggle there <laughs> at the top of the hill. He is absolutely pushing but trying not to, uh, to step outside the boundaries. He is flirting with it. He's flirting with the limits halfway through the lap now as he works his way through the hairpin. He can just execute in the second half. Oh, huge amount of understeer, oh. oversteer. <laughs> Gets that snap. Gets it back in the right direction. He is struggling. As uh, Jake Sperry put it one time, like wrestling an octopus. And that's one of my new favorite terms. <laughs> the thing is, I don't really think you want to be wrestling this car, right? Because I feel like you're just going to be losing more time. There are definitely some cars you got to wrestle, like a stock car. You definitely oh. are going to be wrestling that thing around here. Didn't say that it was an optimal strategy. <laughs> Just that it's <laughs> what it looked like he was doing. Through the arena section, nice and tight. And the, the, the right-hander that he was just working through. You got to be very careful getting back on the power, and even here. Through turn 15, off he goes. So far, so good. I think he's, I mean, we didn't see turn one, so. Assuming you did that correctly. Yeah, turn one's one that the entry and exit are both way wider than you need them to be, uh, but kind of not in the right places, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, the apex, oh, are, oh he did keep it on the track, entry. but he was not on a trajectory for success there, was he? Uh, that was a late entry. I thought he was going to go off, but he held it. Ooh, a little bit of oversteer on the exit across the line for Brackman. Is it a clean lap? You think uh, so? No. No. 
doesn't seem like it. I have a 317, 842 on there. He's got yeah. one more opportunity, but he's not going to get time to do it because he's out of time, 45 seconds to go. So Nathan Brackman will start at the tail of the field. And DJ Alessandrini, Luke Cantor will start up front. But this will be one of those tracks I think it's going to be hard for DJ to pull away. Not impossible. I think you can, there's enough nuance to this racetrack. I think you can pull away. Uh, but it's going to be tricky with those long straightaways. I love the S's. I just think these are such a spectacular section. Uh, the rising and falling and all the paint and everything, it just looks really good. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, you said uh, that it is tedious. In some ways, on uh, paper, it definitely looks more tedious than I think it actually is. It feels so nice to work through. As a driver, I feel like it doesn't feel it as tedious as it probably should be because you're just basically going that entire first sector, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, and then left again. <laughs> So, so, it, but it, it it flows so well. You just it has such a natural flow to it. So the field is going to grid up, and we'll go racing here shortly. Uh, but before we do, uh, we have some sad news to pass along. This past weekend, Andrew Kessel, who has raced in the DC SCCA uh, for years and has been a, com a member in this community and others in the Northeast and beyond, uh, Andrew Kessel passed away in an on-track incident. Uh, this past weekend and uh, we will all miss him very very much uh, for we're gonna have a moment of silence for Andrew Kessel we'll be back in a moment Engines are firing, and we'll be rolling here in just a moment's time for the last race of the season for the Washington, D.C. Region SCCA Virtual Racing League here from Circuit of the Americas. Kyle Heyer joined by Finney and DeCuna for a 30-minute race. About 15 laps on the board is what this race will be. And uh, as we noted, Finney, and fast lap times around here, 205s uh, when you consider uh, the power level these cars have. But uh, we've got almost 20 cars on the grid. Turn one, always a challenge. I always say every time we come here to our, our, our grid life drivers in particular, they build this corner to crash cars. <laughs> yeah, they definitely made it uh, so it's a little bit chaotic on the opening lap, especially of a Formula One race and pretty much every series that comes here. Um, it, it, but it's such a unique challenge. It really, it, this is probably, if you go through all the iconic corners around this track, this is definitely the most iconic and the very first corner that people think of and then heading down towards turn two and then into the S's. It's going to be basically everyone trying to get single file as much as they can throughout the first series of corners because you definitely don't want to be heading through the S's double file. It's definitely possible in these cars, but it's not advised in these cars. One of the best views in motorsports right there. I love that observation tower. I think it's a really neat feature. I've been to Dakota a dozen times now, and I've never been up to the top of that thing. <laughs> I, oh, need really? to, I need to make it a point to go up there uh, when I'm there in May. Never been. There you go. All right, let's quickly run through our uh, starting grid here for this race before we turn things loose. DJ Alessandrini on the front row alongside Luke Cantor in the number one. Moving on back to row number two, solid row. Andrew Pallad in the 96 in third. Morgan Burrard in the two, lined up in fourth. Fifth place, it'll be Colin Daner in the 73, making his return to the series in the last race of the season. And Jake King, what a performance he put on last week. He starts sixth in the number 39. Going on back to seven, Jack Christie's lined up in the number six. Next in Kevin Zhu in the four, lined up in eighth. Ninth place, Ryan Carwile, the 71. Adam Kovac starts 10th in the number 85. Ron Tanson going to be lined up in 11th in the 44. Next in the 528 of Richard Swicky lined up in 12th. Albert No starts 13th in the 181. Mike Leader starts 14th in the number 53. Brantel Brew is going to line up in, six, sorry, in 15th in the 69 car. Next to Nick Brunei in 16th in the number 17 car. Louis Alessi starts 17th in the number 43. Trenton McMillian 18th in the number 18 car. Finian. And rounding out a field of 19 cars, Nathan Brackman in the number 10. That's your starting lineup here. The last race of the season at a track they were going to call Speed City. I think Circuit of the Americas is a fitting name nonetheless. As the field rolls out of the final turn, turn number 20, it is a long wait to the start stand. But we will see when the launch happens. There it goes. DJ Alessandrini is under fire, and here we go. Green flag, and we're racing as Circuit of the Americas up the hill towards Big Red for the first of 15 times. Fanning out behind him, three abreast with Morgan Burkhardt searching up the middle here. He wants second place away from Luke Cantor and Andrew Pilata, but Pilata pulls through. 
and they all make it through there. That was got very tight there for a second. Cantor was caught sleeping on the start and that allowed DJ to get away. Claude and Burkhardt up to second and third respectively and through the S's for the first time. Colin Daner's dropped a couple of spots there in that number 73. He's been absent for a while, but that doesn't mean he hasn't been hard at work chasing Jake King and Luke Cantor, who's definitely gone down a couple of spots in the start. Big jump oh! over the curb. And is that, that's Morgan Burkhardt. Yeah, hit one of the anti cock curbs and the car went flying up in the air. I wonder if he has suspension damage because he took a big hit to those curbs. Car looks like it's tracking pretty straight. I guess Dury's out on how much damage to the floor happened here, but let's go back and see what happened to Morgan. I think he just got a little greedy here on the left, right here behind Pilot, a little unsighted, jumps the curb and it snaps around on him. Yeah, it doesn't look actually uh, as violent as it did initially, so I think he might have been able to get away with it, but lost a huge amount of positions, is back in 11th place. Alessandrini has pulled a gap on Andrew Pilata already. We'll see if he can keep it. Tire management's another topic here. These cars are light, but you have to put a lot of load on them, leaving some of these slow corners. A little battle back here. Franz Hansen in the 44, uh, currently racing a lot better than he qualified. Up one spot and past Mike Leader, and behind him, Albert Noah. Shallow entry on Nick Brunei in that blue car. Who had to make a mistake. That's allowed Mike Leader to make a move on the 44 there, going side by side to turn 15. Leader trying to see if he can get around the outside. Oh. Hansen gonna go around, spin as he hits the curb. Yeah, he's lost it. Throttled up too quickly and around he went. That's how fast things can change. Evan Zoo, Jack Chrissy. This is a fight for sixth place. And Jack Chrissy didn't qualify as well as I was anticipating him to see if he can find some pace in the race. This is just one of those tracks that you either really enjoy or you really don't. There's not, and there's a lot more people <laughs> on the really don't side of that category. Uh, Richard Sawicki's gonna hit pit lane in that uh, number 528. Not exactly sure why, could be damage, could be a start penalty or something of the sort, but uh, line of start here through turn one. Yeah, and off they go into the S's again. Uh, looks like also Nick Bird and I ran into some trouble in the final corner of the lap, so. He's got the car going back in the right direction. Blue Cantor just trying to make it from a relatively poor start. And it looks like he's the kind of cork in the ball at the moment. He's got a tail full of uh, cars. I think what's that? Four cars directly behind him? Yeah, and again, this is just seeing the apexes. This is a sightline problem. If you're following really closely behind Morgan Burkhardt, has gotten by Kobach. I'm curious to see how far he can climb now that he's got the, uh, the curb smash out of the way. Morgan's typically a very accurate driver as far as where he places the car on the track. And that was a momentary lapse that's going to cost him for a lot longer. And on to the back straighter they will go. Jake King now going to have a great chance of getting past Luke Kanker because this is going to be where you really use the slipstream to its maximum effect. Longest straightaway on the lap. Jake King trying to slipstream up to Kanter, and there he's starting to get the overspeed. There's Kanter going defensive. King going to go on the outside, which I would only say is the preferred line around here. I would think so. If you can maintain the overlap in third and 12 down here. Oh, oh okay, Cantor! Cantor. Slides. Car steps out, and he actually got saved by getting a little bit of contact with Jay King, kept the car going the right direction. It was one, two spots to Colin Daner as he will go up to fourth. He will slot himself just in between those two, between himself and Kevin Zhu. I'll try the shallow line here into 15, and again, that car looks not very stable at those low speed, high slip angle scenarios, or two by two here into the carousel. Go almost full throttle in these cars, and you're going to want to be more to that inside lane. Cantor still fighting with Kevin Zhu into the final few corners, and going to chuck it to the inside. Oh, three Zou wide! The run. <laughs> three wide for a second there as Chrissy's trying to line up a move in the final corner. Big dive. Yeah, Cantor is going backwards, and not in, the, not in a good way. Not that there is a good way to go backwards, but he's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Sliding around. That car is not very happy. And pacing Jack Chrissy up the hill, all the while up front. Andrew Plata is slowly reeling DJ Alessandrini back in, so it doesn't look like he's able to check out at the front. Whoa, Kevin Zhu going to spin in front of Jack Chrissy, oh. gets hit. Oh, and I think Carwell got some contact with there as well. A handful piled in there. Oh. Yeah, Albert No. Albert No. Yeah. Yep, just off into the wall and to the side. Let's take a look at what happened here in turn one. Slow speed spin, Jack Chrissy, Luke Cantor, Brian Carwell. All in that, and I think even out Kobach got some damage out of that. But that's gonna at the top of the hill, you can't see anything coming over that crest. So they were all probably taken by surprise there. Oh, I'm sure they were. They probably saw a local yellow way, but it doesn't really <laughs> inform you a whole lot because you're anyway slow through uh, through that part of the track. It's better. You should go left, right, straight. Like, what what do you do to avoid wherever the incident is? And you don't 
we talked about you know having multiple monitors or having VR. If you have that, you can kind of get a little bit of a heads up. Single monitor, it's a jump scare basically coming out of there. And Ryan Carwile's front wing has a bit of damage. Good thing these cars don't use it all that much, I suppose, <laughs> but it's still not going to help, I promise you that. Up front, Alessandrini leads, but it's dwindling. Eight tenths, seven tenths now through turn 12, and Pilata has uh, just set chase on the 61. Yeah, really glad for that. I was hoping we wouldn't get another DJ show just driving <laughs> off into the distance. We had a really a interesting of... show last week at Spa because it wasn't yeah. that, and uh, I'm anticipating a lot of fun here. I'm hoping so. Plata pushing hard to keep up with Allison Drini. And then Jake King also not too terribly far behind, about two seconds back from Pilata. I think he's also looking like he's starting to close in a little bit. Last stop was not too particularly good for King. Pilata, though, actually, uh, looking at the lap times, 205.9 for Pilata last time through. DJ 206.4. Brackman is off at turn 15. He's by himself, so probably just threw it in here. Threw it in there. Uh, offline and skates around on you. Now we see now how much the uh, back and rear end of this car is loose and free, especially when you throw it in the corner. Kevin Zhu coming in, I imagine, for repairs. After he got a decent hit. It's Adam Kobach up the inside of Ryan Carwile. Both of these cars were also involved at that incident last time through turn one. They both have damage. They do, but I think less to the 85 than to the 71. See how bad the downforce is. This is where you're going to need the most through this first sector, through the S's. Series of high downforce corners. Yeah, Kobach got through there a little bit more efficiently. Put some distance on Carl Wild. Alessandrini's pulled out another half second on Pilata all of a sudden, so Pilata must have struggled through the first sector of this lap. Yeah, big thing for Pilata, just keeping in that slipstream range so you, uh, you can get a good run on the back straightaway and a little bit of the front straightaway as well, just to keep DJ in check. Looking at these two, Kovac and Carl heading through the hairpin. Behind as well. And by the way, that uh, observation tower that we keep seeing every time we come through turn 10, uh, that is the most photographed object in Texas. Really? Out. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't think, I'm surprised actually. I feel like there's more things here that, I, I don't know what would be more photographed in Texas. I think when, you, when you consider everyone's social media posts from the Grand Prix weekend. Oh, yeah, that's probably <laughs> Every, it. I mean, I, did, it, I got it, at least it is the 20 most, photos of it on my own phone. So I, I, mean, I would say it's the most defining feature uh, of the track other than the also gigantic Texas flag that they added there that we yeah, don't have in Irish, unfortunately. It was really nice because uh, they, they've had that down for uh, flag repair. Turns out you can't just like order those on Etsy or Amazon. So you, <laughs> when it needs to get repaired, it goes away for like a year. And uh, yeah. it was the first time I'd seen it up in a while, and it was blowing the wrong way. So all the photos from that corner were covered by the flag, the observation towers <laughs> by the flag. I'm like, man, you got to move it a little bit. Too yeah, big. I, I always love the slow-mo shots uh, when Formula One comes in, and the car is rolling through there at sunset, late in, like, uh, practice, uh, practice two. The sun setting on the track, reflecting off the cars, and the giant Texas flag waving in the back is one of the best shots <laughs> yeah. in the calendar. That is a really neat spectacle, absolutely. But uh, battle up front has fizzled. Uh, Alessandrini's pulled out another little bit. I don't actually think he, he's gone faster. It looks, seems like Pilata just gotten slower. Maybe burned the tires up a bit. That's what I was worried because uh, I was watching him when he was working behind DJ, and it looked like he was pushing the car a little bit more. Of course, DJ is really enjoying the clean air up in front, uh, and that's definitely going to be a factor. But yeah, Pilata not too uh, happy these last couple of laps. Three tenths off of DJ. Last time through the line, looking a little bit better sector one this time. He actually made up a couple of tenths since we started looking at him. So he's starting to go back towards the 61, looking further down the order. Bruni in the 17, and then right behind him, Albert Noe in that 181. Good chase here for 14th place, where he's up two spots. Albert Noe uh, might be down a couple because of uh, yeah, because of his spin at turn one a couple of laps ago. Yeah, I'm wondering if he came into the pits. I guess not. Uh, you continue onwards because the damage wasn't that bad. I thought he, he looked like he went off at a pretty decent rate of speed. But he's going to continue soldiering on. Battle for Whoa, oh, big save, man. That was cool. You never really ride on board uh, live when people have a big save like that. But these cars are tricky when they step out. I think the low speed absolutely helped that situation. But uh, when they snap at high speed, your correction can often lead you astray. Oh, yeah. 
But Colin Daner holding station in fourth place. Again, we hadn't seen Colin in a little while. Good to have him back. He's put on a pretty nice show here. Uh, started this race in fourth, fell back to, to the sixth on the opening lap, but he has since kind of remedied that low start. He's back to where he started, but kind of in no man's land. Yeah, I was going to think he's been having a quiet race. So, and you know, we always say, we always joke that sometimes those are the, be are the best days when you're not really talked about a whole lot. Just quietly running your own thing, moved up one spot from where he started and continuing on. Looks like he's continuing the trajectory. I don't think he's quite catching J King. He actually did Maybe about three tenths last lap. So, if he can keep it up, he might see a battle for the podium spot. Might have a chance to talk to him. J King putting in some decent laps, and, and I think our intuition about Pilata was probably correct because DJ while he did just run his best lap he has not done well, I guess he has gotten a little quicker did oh uh, maybe Pilata's best laps aren't registering because he had off tracks in them most likely yeah That's probably I, got, I, I can I can check because I can actually see the older lap times uh let's see best lap range Pilata was a uh, uh, oh yeah he ran the 205.9 earlier yeah two tenths quicker than DJ's yeah, best and, but. A lap, and then uh, a lap after that was a 206.1 uh, his last lap was a 206.5. Yeah, so DJ has picked it up, and Pilata has uh, kind of matched his best legal pace, <laughs> is the way we can say that. <laughs> Actually, DJ's fastest lap is a, oh, uh, just yeah, his last fast time lap, lap, it's a 205.8. He ran a level oh. three. Okay, correct. So he's got it in him. But, of course, uh, you know, off track here, off track there. He dangled that carrot for a couple laps, didn't he? Oh, yeah, you did. But, you know, you know, you, 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 the worst thing is when you give people that sense of hope, right? You know, the, the, I know that while he's leading this race, he's actually pretty frustrated right now because he hates this place. <laughs> he, he was, <laughs> this really? is not a racetrack that he enjoys driving. And, uh, yeah, this, this has not satisfied a lizard brain for DJ at all, especially when he's got no one to race. So he'll... he'll, he'll I thought we saw him in the chat earlier to say something that he liked something. Uh, I mean, maybe What's some, well, some from a previous week. <laughs> yeah, probably was previous week. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I can. There, there are moments when this track frustrates me, but I, I just find it genuinely a lot of fun now. But, and I've also had the, the pleasure of being there a number of times and calling a lot of real world racing there. And genuinely, GT and, and touring car racing at this place is amazing. Oh, so. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm literally looking through the admin chat in the Discord, yeah. and I, I just come across uh, Ken. I love Coda too. DJ, gross. Maybe he won't suck in these cars. <laughs> and then I, I said that DJ doesn't like all the fun tracks, and then uh, <laughs> and he got mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still see that. I like tracks where the track limits have consequences. I mean, that's a fair point. Yeah, that is fair, but I feel like a lot of people will hate this track a lot more if it had, had more um, yeah, just put concrete walls at all the apexes. And, I mean, they already did. They're they're yeah. about a story high on the, those yellow antique concrete. <laughs> but it hasn't, I will say, it hasn't been quite as racy as I was anticipating with these cars. But we are getting little mini battles here. How about Lewis Alessi and Franz Hansen? This is for 12th through the S's here. Here's the thrill of the chase for Hansen. Couple battles here, couple battles there. This is one of them at the moment. Battle for 12th between Alessi and Hanson. We've seen uh, Hanson go up and down the order. Starting 11th is back in 13th Whoa. at the moment. Gets a great run through here, or I should say Alessi got a poor run coming out of that corner and has a great run lined up here. Does he make the move before the hairpin? There's a bit of a school of thought. You know, do you want to get in front of the car here or be uh, behind them on the straightaway? Alessi Hanson's going to go for the dive. Oh. Alessi, oh, oh, he got a little bit too hungry there. He tried to do the crossover. How about Bruni and Zoo do, trying to do the same thing down here at uh, turn number 11? But this is, this will get you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say there is an anti cut curve there as well. It's kind of hard to see, <laughs> but. Well, it was under okay. Lewis's car, so that's why he didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I've hit this in a. Uh, rotate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Delta Ooh, back line, they're about to go. Off. About to go to battle again through the arena section. Some switchbacks about to play out. Lusty trying to get a run on Hanson. He's trying to take the middle line, take the line away from Lusty. It looks like he'll hold them off for now. Lusty carried pretty good speed through 15. He's still hot on his heels here. And if he can maintain this position up onto the main straightaway, he might be in a pretty good spot to take him into turn one. They told about that run through those final few corners, especially the final corner. Which is a lot trickier than it seems, I must add. The final corner? 
Yeah, because it's not the most difficult corner. There's definitely some more ones, but it's deceptive because it seems like it's a, a 90 degree left, but it's a lot. It's actually tighter than that. I always and it, you can easily go off wide and ruin your run. The uh, the corner real life when you do the track walk, you realize how much elevation you have going into it. You're coming downhill pretty hard as well, uh, mm -hmm. and there is some camber to it. But you get to the exit and it flattens out really quickly. So I agree with the deception part. But this track in general, the other place that uh, you don't really think of having a lot of elevation changes is the back straightaway. When you leave turn 11, it is like a oh, yeah. roller coaster up to turn 12. And I it's something that I, you don't think about a lot. I think if you go to TV3 for a car heading there, I think you can see some of the angles of <laughs> the, how much you, how, how hilly it is. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, you can, you can see right there the cars go down, then up, and then they come back down again. But it looks so flat when you jump on board with any car that's driving it. There's that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look that wild. But then you go here and you realize how much of a deal yeah, it actually half is. Half the car gets covered right there in the yeah. shot. Yeah, it's a nuance that I, it, one of the, just like Watkins Glen the first time up the S's when I realized how narrow the place is. It's just something that, uh, while it's laser scanned and accurate, your brain doesn't really comprehend the scale of everything until you're there in person. Here's Francois oh, Bru chasing Carwile for ninth place. What a drive for Francois, by the way. Yeah. In his uh, finale event for his career here at the WDC RSCCA BRL, and look at him past Carwile for ninth place. Yeah, one of the better drives from him this season. Up six places, currently in ninth. If you can hang on as Mark Carwile's trying to fight back. Carwile still carrying that damage on his front wing from earlier, so there's only so much he can fight back through some of these sections of track. Mike Leader tracking him down as well. He's actually been quicker than both of these drivers last few times around. Do the carousel of the go, friends. So, Brew leading, then Carwile, then Leader, 9th, 10th, and 11th. I bet you Leader is sizing these two up right now, waiting for someone to miss the apex at 19, and Francois was off it a little bit. Here's that final corner. It goes uphill here right there, and the track flattens out. And then you see that turn, first turn just looming in the distance. <laughs> here comes the leader with the run on Ryan Carlisle, going to make a left-hand move. On the left side, we'll go for a dive into turn one. Peru going defensive as well. Nice pass there by Leader, nice textbook maneuver. And now there's... sights out on Francois Brewer looking back, though. Kevin Zhu, Louis Lessie. Looks like Kevin's through, Alessi back a spot. Then that other three-car battle into the S's. This is really difficult, especially being uh, in Carwell's position with a damage wing and facing all the dirty air from two cars that are directly in front of him. Wow, look at leader all over the back of Francois. Now does Francois go defensive down here at turn tw uh, 11? I'm curious if Leader's going to even make a move because I, I honestly feel like it's better to wait. Ooh, Ooh that was man. close! Holy cow! They almost touched front rear wing, uh, front wing to rear wing right there on the braking. That was very very tight. Yeah, because Leader thought he was going to going to go a little bit more deeper into the braking zone, and yeah, here he comes. I don't think Brew can do a whole lot here. Tries to go defensive in the middle of the straightaway. Leader, he will elect to go on the left-hand side. See, that's interesting. I think he's going to have him cleared by the corner anyway, but yeah, it sets you up to get crossed over. But then if you get crossed over, you're, you're going to be on the inside anyway, so that's probably the best course of action for Leader. Yeah, he will get the job done. Yeah, I think you can definitely make that left-hand side work. You just got to pretty much get die past the driver on the entry and then pretty much park it on the apex to make sure that they don't get a run on you on that outside. You can carry so much uh, speed on that outside part of the corner. I'm impressed that we haven't really seen anyone lock up today. Locking up. Oh, ask and you shall receive. Well, well it's just one of those places <laughs> where you're coming from so fast that by the time yeah. you get slowed all the way down to, what, 30, 40 miles an hour, you've got almost no downforce left on the car. And so you're not, you're not putting all that pressure on the tires, and it just gets very easy to skid in the last 50 or 100 feet of the braking zone. So. Uh, I guess these cars are light enough that uh, they're not really generating enough uh, brake force anyway. You're not really yeah, touching can, them that much. But. I can attest that I was doing some laps in a cup car. I did some laps in, I think, this car and uh, GTP, and then I went to drive a stock car. Heading into that, uh, that back end of the back straight, we have to break almost what seems like a mile away from the <laughs> yeah, There's, there's a, the shot of, uh, who was it? That was uh, the MX-5 driver that ran. Uh, Connor Zilich uh, qualified like right up in the front of, uh, I think he was pole for the truck race, and immediately locked up and drove off into, into the gravel <laughs> on the turn one. Just totally different animal. Uh, 
and he did that like five more times in the race. Yeah, it's part of that muscle memory, especially when you're used to driving so something so nimble and light compared to a stock car that's got a huge amount of power and no brakes yeah. in our handling. And that MX-5 has ABS as well, so that <laughs> adds to that. Uh, but there was a couple drivers kind of ribbing each other. Jesse Love Jr. was uh, throwing some shade at him. And uh, Connor threw it right back about how Jesse ran out of fuel at a plate race he was about to win. So they've been <laughs> having jabs at each other. You yeah, can see some more jabs potentially here with this battle between Mike Luger and Francois Boubou. Now has you now getting the overspeed pulls on a little bit early, I would think. Yeah, I think he was, might have just been trying to serve it just as a distraction to Leader, but Leader didn't take the bait. How about Zoo and Hansen, though, side by side into 12? Whoa! Zoo has the car uh, turn a little bit on a braking, but he's going to spin out from braking a little bit too hard, but he's going to continue side by side. He's going to be a bit on the outside. I don't know if he can carry that speed. He's going to try to. Wow. Well, actually, carried a lot more speed than I thought he could through that corner. Woo. See the car unstable as he tries to get back on the power and handle this thing through there. He's really wheeling it <laughs> through the corner, and it will just get by Hanson in turn 15. Nicely done. It's one of those moments you show him I'm crazy. I'm coming through. <laughs> okay, yes, you can have it. I want that bad. <laughs> that was a nicely done pass there by Kevin. He was ringing the neck of that car through the stadium section, and then... Rudy Alessi Sawicki, where he came to pit lane earlier. He's driving all the way back up to 15th place. Uh, Louis Alessi looking a little bit slower. Which he's got an issue, or yeah, he's just trying to let him bond by? Eight seconds down on his lap, so I wonder if he's got damage that he picked up maybe in the S's. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, trying to go through the lap and see if I notice anything in the first part of the lap. Yeah, it was eight seconds slower, so something happened. He had a curb strike, but it wasn't anything too crazy. Nope, oh, five laps to go, coming to four laps to go next time by. Seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this 30 minute race. And uh, Alessandrini is running laps that are just incredibly consistent, only a couple hundredths off from his best. And Andrew Pallotta is putting in some nice laps as well. His best lap is actually quicker, the best legal lap is quicker than DJ's, 206. 007 to DJ's 206 106, but not consistent enough for long enough. I think really for this year's woo, it's the uh, side by side battle here. Rooney and Sawicki side by side for 14. Oh, good Sawicki crossover. Trying to do the over under. Oh. And trying to get the uh, issue is that he's not going to get a lot of. Uh, you know, you, you ideally, want to try to get some of that slipstream to help you kind of move on past, but it's going to be pretty much a drag race between these two. That, that was straight just, up. Swicky going a little bit quicker. Yeah, it was well timed to carry speed. This works better in cars where you're grip limited on exit uh, because you can get power down sooner and you're not spinning tires for as long. But Richard was able to get that thing throttled up right in time. And but now he didn't get cleared, so he's going to have to ride the outside through a double right hander. Rudy's going to leave him plenty of space. Great racing between these two. Richard's way out there on the racetrack, but he's going to get this, I think, here at 15. Yeah, park it on the apex and throw it in there, and he will move his way on through Bruni back to 15, but not for long as the Louis Lessie, he's still back there in 16. Then here is a battle, Colin Daner and Morgan Burkhardt. Yeah, Morgan, remember, he spun out on the opening lap after striking a curb here in the S's following a couple of the cars. Oh, he does it again! <laughs> that was two turns early from what he did on the opening lap, but he almost did it again, like you said. Yeah, he's just laser focused on the car ahead and drilled that curb, but he is chasing down Collinator and has not held him back, and there is major dramas at the back of the field. Three oh, cars just looking at here. spun out, and this is uh, Bruni and uh, Sawicki. I think it's Bruni, Wicki must have spin here. Yes, he does, right in front uh, of Bruni, and Bruni gets collected with him. And then there's Albert No, uh, Albert No, yeah. Yeah. Drives right into it, nowhere for him to go. Yeah, he's got terminal damage, he's gonna be out of the race. This is just bad, bad timing. Ah, gosh. That's, that is day over, unfortunately. Daner and Burkhardt side by side down the back stretch towards turn 12. In the breaking zone, Burkhardt going a little bit more through Daner, trying to see if he gets out of the exit. Whoa, Burkhardt sideways on the exit. So is Daner as he tries to get back on the power, looking to the outside here. Can't quite get there in time. He's going to do a switch back, go to the inside to the next corner. Whoa, he's trying to fight hard for this. Yeah, Burkhardt carved off the uh, exit very well at the exit of 12 and 13. That will hold Daner back. And I don't know, I mean, Morgan's just lights out quick. 
I don't know that uh, Daner's got the raw pace to stay with him, but maybe with the slipstream he can do that. So I don't think this is over quite yet, but Morgan has been light in the afterburner since that spin on the opening lap. He wants it back. Where did he start this race? Back in uh, right here in fourth. He started in, uh, yeah, he started in fourth and drifted all the way back to 11th was his lowest. I think he actually technically 12th and climbed all the way back up now to fourth. And might not be over this run. It's one of those races that you uh, wonder what could have been. Like to do it all yeah. over again, right? But <laughs> you look at the start, you look at the finish, you go, I went nowhere. I spent 30 minutes doing absolutely nothing. But they wouldn't tell you the whole story. No, definitely not. And trying to see, I don't know if we'll be able to catch Jay King. Don't know if we have enough time left in the race. We had another 10 laps. So I think definitely would have been possible. But fourth might be all he can get. Well, he's still got Daner to worry about. Daner's still very much close to him, so he can still lose that spot again. I think Daner's best shot is to pressure Burkhardt and hit one of those curbs again. Those have been uh, kind of the... Uh, Healy's Hill? Yeah, the no-no spot there for Morgan Burkhardt. Oh, man, they are cutting it so <laughs> close to those things. I mean, those... The track hardly ever runs with those curbs. They have a couple different levels of ones that they run, and uh, when we were there for Super Lap Battle, they had taken basically all of them out. And yeah, I'm not surprised because it would destroy pretty much everyone's suspension. Yeah, they're, they're not, not fun. fun. They're not fun. And, and honestly, the they have a couple other levels of them that are a little bit less severe, and all of them are preferable. I, I really wish we got the Iris and got a version of it without the anti-cut curves. Uh, when the NASCAR runs, oh, especially yeah. with their new contracts. I, I would love if they made them like different track variants and you could just select which time. Right? Yeah. But someday. Burkhart keeping Daner in the rear view for now. I guess the double side views, no rear views on this car. <laughs> Nowhere to stick that? I think stick him on the halo, technically. Yeah, I could be able to see much. <laughs> I think we are likely at two to go. I think so. Yeah, because we're, DJ's only in the S. No, no, sorry, he's, we are going to be at no, two to go. He's in 20. I, I was losing track of where he was on track compared to what we were watching. So. Coming to two laps to go, DJ Alessandrini. That three and a half second advantage over Andrew Pallotta. Then it's Jake King, Burkhard, Daner, Cantor. And Francois oh, Peru. Peru. Oh, no. We'll drop him out of the top ten. Back to both as Kevin Zoo zooms around him. Oh, that was a weird spot to lose it, too. Uh, not really. These cars, that you need quite a bit, of, a lot of rear grip through this particular corner, and a lot of guys will see you get the back end a little bit more free. Yeah, just loop to the inside. And Richard Sawicki and Louis Alessi, these two have seen each other a couple of times today. Probably Who wins the battle? Times. Who wins the war? <laughs> Looks like you're going to try to go around the outside here. You're going to go way outside. You have a lot of room to the 43, unless he's trying to come back a little bit tighter at the end. I think he's been leaving a wide... Oh, oh. He's had a wide berth. <laughs> no, wide berth. <laughs> That's a different thing. <laughs> Does he lay eggs? No. <laughs> uh, but he's been leaving a lot of racing room uh, on this racetrack today, which is always great to see. Here comes a drag race up the hill towards turn one, and I think Sawicki's going to win this battle. But again, he won it before and ended up back here again, so we'll see what happens. Much tighter line to turn one. I think he should get a more than a, enough of a run to get ahead of Alessi, and he will stay ahead as they head through turns two and three. Alessi's kind of in the shadow of the 528 here. Watch these rumbles. Swicky really threw it in there, but he's making time and apexing turn seven, uh, six a lot later. Here's seven. Missed that one. Oh, yeah, he did. And then here's turn eight, another really fun corner. He's going to kind of hug the right. Oh, Francois Brew. Not sure if he went around or had a bit of a speed. He had, uh, had a little bit of a moment out of the hairpin that allowed Franz Hansen to get around. To these two at turn 11. A little to bit too conservative front. for Alessi. White flag last time around here at Circuit of the Americas. Last lap of the season. Three and a half miles remain. And DJ Alessandrini. He, I mean, is, is it a WDCR SCCA virtual racing league race? If he's not out front, at least at some point. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, you ever seen the joke of the memes for Formula One? where It's like summary of the season. And it's like, uh, lights out, away we go. And Max Verstappen. Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he replaced Max Verstappen with DJ. And I mean, he got not, that for 
Not, not to take away any of his talent uh, or the time that he puts in. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it has been. Man, Morgan, you got to leave those things alone, oh. man. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> I think he has a bet with himself of how close he can get to all these curves. And I think you've gotten a little bit too close. So here's a drag race down the front straightaway. Carl versus Kevin Zhu. Battle for 10. Zhu a little bit going a little bit quicker down the front straightaway. Kevin Carl can't quite fight back at the moment. Zhu's got 10th from Ryan Carwile, and they'll do battle another three and a half or so miles until they get back to the checkered flag. And there's that battle you mentioned between Hansen and Brew. This is for 12th place, and here comes Brew chasing through the left, through the right, here in the S's, dodging those curbings. Look out as Franz Hansen's throwing the car in there, and Brew in tight formation behind him. Yeah, Brew actually gave a little bit of space, thing to get a little bit more breathing room to rotate the car a little bit better, but going to want to try to close that gap here as they head out towards the hairpin and then the back straight away. And that's going to be one of his last major opportunities to get back at him. And Zhu and Carwile again fighting for 10th place on the braking zone here into the hairpin. Now on to the back stretch for the final time. Within four tenths of a second, I don't and know if it's whoa. close enough to draft, but we might get to Meanwhile. see one more duel. Meanwhile, up at the front, DJ Alessandrini working through the final corner. Checkered flag, DJ Alessandrini finishing off the season where he started at the front of an F4 race. DJ Alessandrini wins at Coda. Andrew Pallotta comes home in second. Jake King in third. Then Morgan Burkhardt and Colin Daner right behind. That is a close fight. And then back to the battles that are still on fire. This one between Hansen and Brew. This is Francois's last passing attempt, at least for a while, because he is moving overseas. and will not be able to participate in these races going forward. So can he get one more spot in his WDCR SCCA virtual He's racing league career? Here he comes. He's close on the back of hand. Sandy, if he can set up a move through the final few corners, it's going to be tough, but not entirely impossible in these cars. Right oh, here through right 19. There. Door he's opens. To make a dive. Hansen not going to cover it. Brew, one last opportunity to throttle up to the checkered flag. Side by side, not quite. Francois Brew's going to come home just car lengths behind Franz Hansen. What a battle they had there. Richard Sawicki, Louis Alessi, Nathan Brackman, and Nick Bruni. Here's Nick in 17th place. And just like a handful of these drivers towards the rear of the field here, this would not tell you the whole story of their day. Oh, it's yeah. Been kind of all over the place. A lot, a lot of drivers have been all over the place. They've moved up a couple spots, moved down a couple spots, moved up a couple spots again. Very eventful days for a lot of these drivers back here. A lot of battling for a lot of these drivers back here, got to say. And he'll be the last one to the checkers, and he was actually going to return to the pit lane. That will conclude the season for the Washington, D.C. Region SCCA Virtual Racing League. DJ Alessandrini wins it again, but here's a look at your race results here. Uh, about four and a half seconds was the winning margin, but it was down to under a second, but Andrew just could never reel DJ in for Yeah, I think, again, I uh, can confirm my suspicions earlier on that I think he's pushing maybe a little bit harder than he had to to try to keep up with DJ, and DJ, was, I guess, in cruise control, was able to break off the draft after that and go off in the distance. We got Jay King finishing in third, Morgan Burhard, a great recovery for him from back to 12th all the way back to fourth. Colin Deaner, solid top five for his return to the league. Then Cantar, Chrissy, Kovac, Leader, and Kevin Zhu rounding out your top ten. And looking down the rest of the order here, Ryan Carwile in 11th place. Some damage to that car left him a little bit uh, one hand tied behind the back, but he was able to successfully battle with a few of those. Francois Brew was running up inside the top ten. That's a disappointing end, I think, for, uh, for his championship and for uh, his race, just because he had so much more pace than he was able to show. Uh, by the end of it, Finian. Yeah, I think so. And then looking at the rest of the order, uh, Francois Bruce, Swicky, Alessi, Brackman, Bruni, No, and Trinity McMillian, who actually didn't see, didn't, he saw him retire early, didn't see exactly what happened to him, but running out your field of 19 cars. Well, Francois is one of the drivers we wanted to talk to, and uh, while tonight he finishes the race in uh, 13th place, Francois, it is the end of more than just a race tonight. Uh, welcome to the booth here, and uh, man, it's going to be tough to see you go, but it's been a blast having you around. Thank you, Cal. Uh, just, uh, just wanted to say um, 
my goodbye to everyone. Uh, yes, I'm going back. Uh, I'm going back home in France. And uh, three o'clock in the morning for races for the next year. That's going to be a little bit difficult. But uh, I just wanted to uh, a big shout out for all the great community that uh, SCC has been providing to me. And for the past 23 years, I had a, a lot of fun, a lot of friendships, uh, great people, great passion. Um, Definitely, I'm going to keep uh, a lot of memories from it, and I'll still be on virtual way. But uh, I just wanted to to thanks everyone, and along the way, 20 years it's a really long time, and I've met a lot of people, great people, uh, still doing it, still passionate about it, and uh, and I hope uh, I'll be uh, I'll still be there even virtually for years to come. So thank you, thank you so much, and thank you ACCA, and thank you all uh, for for having me for so long. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here and being a part of it. We're going to miss you. And, uh, hey, someday I'd like to join you in your home country and uh, and see some racing <laughs> over there. Someday. I need to get my passport first, but I'm coming. I'm, you I'm definitely, coming? No. Yeah, definitely. You're, you're going to be invited. Uh, my, my home will be yours. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. We're going to miss you. And we'll t hopefully talk to you at some other point in the future. We'll see you around. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. And DJ Alessandrini wins another one here at Coda. Man, is this uh, you happy? I feel very, very Max for stopping me. I was going to say. Yeah, I made a joke about that <laughs> on the final lap. Well, congrats, DJ. Was it punishment well, to thanks, drive around guys. here by yourself for 30 minutes, or are you all right with it? You know what, Kyle? I'm going to be honest. It's not bad. I see. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> the off tracks are a, a bit tedious. Yeah, the they off feel, tracks stink. Yeah. I wish. I wish this track had the same off tracks as like Aragon, where it's like when you stop making noise on the curb, you get the off track. Because to me, that makes sense. But when I when I'm still making noise on the curb and I uh, get an off track, that's a little frustrating. But in a Formula car, it has a really good flow. A car with doors, I will still say Coda sucks. <laughs> That's fair. I'll give you that. I had a lot of fun watching it. It's not a track we actually visit very much here on Sim TV, so it is fun to come here every once in a while. But uh, DJ, uh, great season again. What's your thought on open wheel in general? We haven't done it in a while, and after doing a full season of it, uh, your final thoughts on this versus some tin tops? Yeah, they they just drive like perfect. <laughs> They like do exactly, uh, and then the the tuning setup changes that you can make. You can really just like customize it uh, per track. Though I would I would say most of the time I just use the iRacing provided setup. Like whoever's making those setups, like they re like I just used the iRacing provided setup for for this track, and it was perfect. Uh, I even tried a VRS set, and the iRacing one was faster for me. So, <laughs> like. I really think doing a heck of a job with their fixed setups. Um, this car feels great. Uh, I think it races good. The limited time I actually got to race people. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. I think this is the right speed for formula cars. Uh, faster than this, it starts to get a little weird. But this, this to me is a lot of fun. Well, been a pleasure to have you around, DJ, and uh, this has been a, a fun season. And I don't know when we're starting up next, but it's probably going to be a while. So I'm sure we'll see you around in other places and other and with other faces. But uh, for now, this is the end of the DC SCCA Virtual Racing League. So uh, congratulations on a season well done. Kyle, thank you. Finian, thank you. Uh, all the admins, thank you. Um, it, with, without you, we would uh, we would just be like playing bowling or something. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Gosh, is there Never a worse know, punishment? Well, <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, <laughs> thanks, DJ. All right, we'll later. We'll see you around. Golf. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Man, what a season we had, Finian. And with that, uh, that concludes our coverage of the 2023-2024 Washington, D.C. Region SCCA Virtual Racing League. And uh, we mentioned Francois Bru heading back to France after 23 years in the U.S. and with the SCCA. Uh, just uh, been, been a pleasure, Finian, and uh, open wheel racing. We don't see a lot of it here on Sim TV, but what we do see is often quite a bit of fun. So I'm just glad to have been a part of it. And uh, I guess this is, uh, we'll wrap things here, Finian, but uh, next season it might be the fall. Yeah, we'll see what we got in store for the next uh, series for these guys. Anytime they do get out something, they usually end up putting on a show, and that was pretty much the case here for the Formula 4 cars that they had.
Well, that'll do it for us and for quite some time here on Sim TV. But the next thing that's going to pop up uh, that you should watch this weekend is the first round of the Toyota GR Cup North America Esports League. That will be live on GT World and uh, on the SRO Motorsports Twitch channel uh, this weekend at 2.30 Eastern. We look forward to seeing you there. I'll be announcing alongside Justin Prince. Finning will be issuing penalties to all the naughty drivers uh, <laughs> this weekend. It's a 60-minute race with the Toyota GR 86s. It is an official series uh, sponsored by Toyota and the GR Cup North America. So a thrilling experience for us, and we look forward to seeing everybody there watching that show this weekend on Saturday on GT World's YouTube channel. Thanks so much, everybody, and we'll see you next season here for the Washington, D.C. Region SCCA Virtual Racing League.